All right, we're going to take a look at the for range loop. Now, anytime you're dealing with large data sets, you're going to want to use loops. Now, we created an example here to show the complete absurdity of not using a loop. So, we have our prices array, and we have 10 items in that array. And we're going to add all those items up into our total, and then we're going to print it. So, each index needs to be accessed and that value needs to be added to the total. So our prices array, we access index zero, which is 3.12. We add that to our current total. And then whatever the result of that is, we assign that to, to total. Now, and so it's just rinse and repeat. So let's go ahead and run that real quick. Okay, 54. 0.24. Now let's take a look at a much better way of doing this. And let's go ahead and run that. All right, we also get 54.24. So our for loop here, our for range loop, is replacing this entire chunk of code right here. And as you can imagine, this array only had 10 items in it. If this had, say, well over a thousand, this would be completely unwieldy to work with. But with our for loop here, it doesn't matter what the size of the array is, we just pass in the name of our array, and the compiler will go ahead and figure out how long it is, and, you know, do it for us. So let's look at an example that takes a little bit of a deeper, deeper dive. All right, so we have another prices array. This one only has three items in it. But we're going to go ahead and run our for loop, and it'll keep continue running this chunk of code until the range can no longer bring back another value from prices. So range is going to range over this array, so range over all the values, and when it runs out, that's what's going to tell the for loop to stop. So range is going to return two different values. It's going to return an index, and it's going to return a value at that index. So let's just let's run that real quick. There we go. All right. So we have our, on the first time through of our for loop, range is going to return index zero, place it into I, and at index zero is 3.12 and places that into V. It then proceeds to run this block of code. And like we said, index is zero, value is 3.12, and total is still zero. So in the next line though, we're gonna go ahead and take that value of V and we're gonna add that to total. So that's gonna make that 3.12. So once we get to the end here, range is gonna go ahead and pull another, attempt to pull another item. It pulls uh, index one and value of 0 0.199, or I'm sorry, 0 0.99. And it will continue to go right through again. So index you know, is going to be 1, value is going to be 0.99, and our total at that point is 3.12. And it's just going to keep ranging through until it gets through all the values. And when there's nothing left, the for loop stops. So our total here at the end is 6.98. So hopefully this was useful in seeing the value in using loops. Um, these are very small data sets, but once you start using extremely big data sets, they'll become an absolute necessity. All right, see you in the next one.